Okay, so once again, the main part, main objective for today is to solve three part inequalities and to do some application problems with inequalities. And the reason why these are called three part inequalities is do you guys have a guess? There's one part, two parts, three parts. How about that? Three parts of inequality right there, okay? All right, so being that we have three parts on this, you got to also remember, like, when you do one to one part, you have to do it to all three parts. So in this case, we're solving for x. What would I do first to solve for x on this? Subtract 3. Subtract 3, and if I subtract it here, I've got to subtract it to all three parts. Okay? When I do that, I have negative, oops, excuse me, negative 2. And then I have less than or equal to 2x, less than 8. Now what? Divide everything by 2. So this would be negative 1, less than or equal to x, less than 4. Okay? The second part of this is graphing. And basically, most of these that are like this are x lies between two numbers, okay? So this would be negative 1 and 4 here. And is it an open circle at negative 1 or a closed circle? Closed, because it's an equal sign underneath there, because of that. Um, and then at 4, is that an open circle or a closed circle? Open. So I would go through and fill in between. Any questions? All right, for B, what's the first thing I'm going to do on B? Solving for X. Plus 5. Plus 5, all right. Add 5. If I do it here, I got to do it here, and I got to do it here. All right. So this will be 2 less than or equal to 2 thirds x less than 4. How do I get rid of that fraction? Multiply yeah, multiply everything by 3. Okay. So this will be 6 less than or equal to 2x less than 12. Now what? Divide everything by 4. Oh, sorry, 2. Excuse me. Holy moly. I know I'm losing it. Okay. 3 less than or equal to x less than 6. All right, so if I graph that, got a 3 and a 6. Open circle or closed circle? Closed. How about this one? Open and fill it in. Okay. For C, five. add five. So we got two less than one half x less than four. Multiply everything by 2 to get rid of that fraction. So we have 4 less than x less than 8. Yay. I do have a trick question for you guys. Here it is. What if I had negative 2 less than negative 2x less than 4? Yeah, 
divide by a negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Oh, ho, ho. yes. you got to flip it. You said going, idiot, idiot. I do not. Okay, so there you are. How do I graph that? Two closed circles. Two closed circles on? One. One is going to be over here, though, right? Yeah. Notice they're kind of in the opposite order. And then negative two would be right here. So make sure that when you graph it, graph it right, okay? So two things there. Don't forget to flip your, your inequalities and also to graph it in the right order, okay? Nope, not quite. I got more. <laughs> okay. So here's a first example. You set builder notation to describe all real numbers satisfying the given conditions. Okay, so a number increased by 5 is at least 2 times the number. How would I write this? Yep, x plus 5 at least. So d can it include 2 times the number? Yeah, it can. So it would be 2x. Okay, at least means it can also include that number. Okay, so now I want to solve for this. So if I take away an x from both sides, I have 5 is less, uh, greater than or equal to x. Okay, so if I'm going to use set builder notation to describe this, I would say x such that x is less than or equal to 5. Any questions? Okay, so let's go to the next problem. Number two. Sure. Okay, the quotient. What operations getting done with the quotient? Division. Okay. Of three times a number, how would I write that? Three x, good. And five, where does that five go if it's a quotient? Gonna, actually, because it says quotient here, so it's three times a number and five. These all go with the division thing, okay? So the three times a number is going to be on top, five is going to be on bottom. Is increased by 4. Plus 4. Okay, the result is no more than 34. So 34 goes on the, le uh, the right side of the equation. But which inequality am I going to put? Less than? Does and equal to, yes. Because it can include the 34 but it has to be that or less. So to solve this, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. I have 3x over 5 is less than or equal to 30. Now what? Multiply by 5. Multiply by five. I have 3x is less than or equal to 150, 150. Divide by 3. Okay, so on this one, you need to be able to set up these. It's going to be, to earn a B in the course, you have to have a final average of at least 80%. 80 so I know that my ending on the right side is going to be greater than or equal to 80. On the first three exams, you have a score of 82, 74, and 78. The final exam counts for two grades, so I'm going to call that 2x. 
We don't know how much whether that is. And we need to find the average. So we're going to add all these together and divide by the number of tests. How many numbers of tests do I have? Not six. Yeah. Five. Because this one's worth two, right? Okay. So now that we have five, we're going to multiply both sides by five. This will be 82 plus 74 plus 78 plus 2x is greater than or equal to 400. So these three added together is 234 plus 2x greater than or equal to 400. Subtract this on both sides. I get 166. If I divide by 2, this person needs to earn a score of at least 83% on his final, his or her final. A car can be rented from Continental Rental for $80 a week, 80, oh, sorry, $80 a week plus 25 cents a mile. So I could write that as 80 plus 0.25 M for miles. How many miles can you travel if you can spend at most $400? So what inequality am I going to use for this? It's going to be less than or equal to because I cannot spend more than 400. Okay? So if I subtract 80 from both sides, I have 0.25 miles less than or equal to 320. Divide by 0.25. M is going to be 1,280 miles. So don't go over that limit if you're on vacation and you can only spend $400. Okay?